What's up, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla, Spy, and the overall markets. I'm going to talk about some big factors going the way the market's moving, which you should be watching for as time goes on. But just note that I'm not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moon link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention 8.1% APY and uninvested cash. Saw friends in just seven days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, for Neo, I just want to say that we had a green day today as Neo uh, started off with this big dip all the way down close to $5, only to get bought back up. I mentioned to everyone there might be a small dip coming to Neo close to this area, and we would remain in this channel. We remain very close to staying in this sh channel, but we're still, once again, range bound and less. And we didn't really make that big of a move, we're only up like 0.7%. Now, it is possible we just remain in this channel for the time being, but there will be more catalysts to affect the markets. So I want to focus on those for first before I break down these charts. The first thing worth mentioning is that tomorrow is going to be Tuesday, September 24th, 2024. Do not forget that at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 30 minutes after the market opens, we have the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index shipments and services data coming out. That's going to be important to so look for some volatility then. And besides that, there's not really a whole lot else that's coming out. So that's what we're seeing for tomorrow. I also want to mention that right now the market's still at greed as buyers are continuing to hold the market high levels. But I do want to call out that we're at these extreme levels and the market's at some tough resistance. So you want to be a little bit careful here with the way things are moving. Also, the market remains neutral in terms of our puts and call option ratios. The market's waiting for a decision. And we saw a very, very indecisive day today as the market was very choppy. For earnings, there's not much coming out for the week except for Costco towards the end of the week on Thursday. So just want to give you guys a heads up about that. You guys could freeze the video here and look at this chart if you're interested in looking at these tickers. But I want to call out one more thing. There's a lot of geopolitical situations that are very, very, very tense right now. We're also seeing a lot of, uh, you know, U.S. politics getting involved in all of this. And uh, my job is not to get political. I just want to say the same thing again, which is that the tensions that we're seeing have gone on for centuries, if not thousands of years. And it's very sad to see this. Um, at the end of the day, things are continuing to escalate, and this is not the best of news. Uh, the market's not really affect, affected by this so far. At least the market's not reacting. But things could change depending on the U.S.'s involvement and what else the U.S. tends to do. So we'll see what the effect of this is on different factors out there, how this affects oil and factors like that. But I just want to mention that at the end of the day, like I said, it's just horrible news to hear about this. We will see if this ends up affecting the markets or not later on down the line. As far as Neil goes, on September 16th, we had the EL8, which is the ES8 in the Chinese market. They began their European deliveries, which is great news. That's leading to a lot of growth, at least in the company. I can't wait to see how they continue to expand. There's been a lot of talk about what many analysts are seeing for 2025 to 2030. I mean, you're projecting we're going to be seeing Neo continue to push into the 26 area uh, and then continue to pump to much higher levels. So there's a lot of upside potential for the next couple of years, according to analysts. And I think that the levels we're at are very, very good buying opportunities for the long term. Volume is currently at 66 million. It's still above average. And then short volume is still dipping a little bit. Once again, a good sign. And all of these remain the same as analysts remain uh, neutral or bullish on NEO. The price price ratio is holding up and we're actually getting very close to September deliveries next week. Can't wait for that. Finally, we also have, in terms of seasonality, Tuesdays are known for being green 55% of the time. Same thing with Wednesdays, but I am a little bit concerned about this. So in order for NEO to turn bullish, we got to break past 5.6. If that breaks, we return more bullish. And if we end up losing support at about the 5.2 area, we're looking for 5 again. This looks like it might be dipping back down to about 5.16 to maybe bounce back up and just continue to consolidate for the time being. I find that to be the most likely case. However, my view of the market is very nuanced. I think that the market is at risk of dipping. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to break down exactly why I think that. So to be bullish on SPY, you want to break past 570 and 572. To be bearish, you want to see us lose 568. If that fails us, we're going to be dipping back down to 565, followed by 563. But looking at the structure, SPY has been kind of struggling to hold at this level. We have a tough resistance, and we have kind of like a high here coming down for a lower high. And then we also have this yellow trend line acting as our support, we're kind of losing this right here. So I'll be watching to see if we could hold 568 or not. I just want to call out that ES, of all things, still is kind of rejecting. We're stuck within a range at 57.80. That's going to be our resistance followed by 57.50 as our support. So we're still stuck. But just know that if we lose 57.50, we'll be dipping lower. And we also have this gap down here to fill on ES. So it's a little bit tricky right now as we're indecisive. I do see a risk of us retesting the 20 EMA as we're turning bearish on our MACD. And momentum is slowing down. Look at my other indicators. So 
This would determine the possibility of more downside, especially if we end up losing 57.50. For others out there, such as NVIDIA, NVIDIA is dipping right now. I think that we're just going to consolidate for some time, but there is a risk of us coming down to about 114, a little bit lower to fill this gap before we try to balance. We haven't fully filled this gap yet, so there could be a little bit more downside, so just be careful. As far as Bitcoin goes, we're dipping a little bit. We're looking to see if 63,123 holds. If that doesn't hold, we're looking for 62,500, and we'll see if we bounce off that. For Tesla, we pushed very nicely. We're still looking very strong, but the issue with Tesla is... Uh, the issue with Tesla, excuse me, is that uh, the 250 to 255 area tends to be very tough resistance for it. So there's a good chance that this might slow it down just a bit. This high resistance up here in this 250 area that could slow things down for Tesla. So I think we might push close to 250, but then we'll see if Tesla could hold. It may not sustain these levels, might kind of push a bit and start dipping. So just be very, very mindful of that. For NQ, we're dipping a bit. We had a high and we we're making a lower high right here. I think we might retest our 20 EMA if 19,980 breaks. We're looking for 19,800 as our next target. We could be dipping if that fails us. So I'll be watching to see how we end up holding. We're kind of range bound for now. The QQQ is also dipping a bit. We have this gap to fill way down here around 475. If we don't hold for 480, we could be dipping. It's also very possible we have a double top leg structure. Watch 480 is key support. That's going to be where our 20 EMA is by tomorrow. If that fails us, we're looking for a dip. I think we might be testing that tomorrow. So just be careful. What else could fuel some more downside is the fact that Apple looks more bearish. I think this easily goes down to 225 or below, and we might even fill this gap down to 222. That could fuel a little bit of a dip. Also, the IWM is dipping right here. If we don't hold above 220, we're looking for 218. It looks a little bit weak as we're just barely around our 20 EMA. Coinbase is dipping right here as well. We have this gap over here. We also have this uh, 167 area as a key support. Amazon's still looking very, very nice. It pushed all the way up to about 194, just under my target of 195. But if we end up losing 192.75, we could be looking for a dip back down to 190. So it's possible it dips a bit, but we're at a tough resistance. And we're still holding up well, so it's not as weak. Meta, however, pumped and then dumped, kind of rejected here. So there is a risk of it dipping closer to 560 again, if not 555. So I think this imbalance down here will fill towards the 560 area. Maybe a little bit more downside looks probable. For Microsoft, we look more bearish. We lost 434, so this might be dipping back down towards 430. And then Google could also look like it's going to be dipping. I, I see basically 162.5 coming. If that fills us, the gap fill in the 162s will come, followed by 160.5. So I see some risks of downside for the markets, so if I'm going to be very frank with you guys. And I think that with tech potentially dipping a bit, this might cause a small little pullback, but the market could still bounce later on. For now, we might dip a little bit. So that could even slow things down for NEO. NEO may start off with a little pop tomorrow and start dipping back down towards 5.16. Then look for a rebound after that and some sideways price action. But there is a risk of us dipping in the markets, which could slow NEO down. NEO is still range bound, so it's still holding up very nicely. So I wouldn't turn to bullish or bearish. I'm just trying to say that we are still in a range, so we have to give NEO some time. However, look for a little bit of a dip tomorrow morning, followed by a bounce attempt, but we might still close a little in the red as the market may dip tomorrow, looking at my technicals. With that being said, I thank you for listening. Please have a great day. I'll see you guys very soon in the next one in just uh, one day from now. Until then, thank you and peace out.